Today's video is on antiparticles and is based on the 2015 AQA AS level specification. Firstly, let's begin with photons. Photons are packets of electromagnetic radiation. And uh, if you don't know the electromagnetic spectrum, then uh, here it is. There's also a song that uh, accompanies this. Uh, I think I can hear it in the distance. Uh, I'll leave a link to that song in the description. It actually is really, really helpful. Uh, I've had this spectrum memorized since, well, it's been about two, three years now. Anyways, uh, electromagnetic radiation exists as photons of energy, to packets, basically. The energy of a photon depends on the frequency of the radiation. Now that we got that out of the way, we can get into the nitty gritty fun stuff. The antiparticles. Every particle has a matching antiparticle with the same mass and rest energy, but opposite charge. Here's a nice little table. Um, so each antiparticle is basically called anti-whatever, um, and has a line above the symbol to signify the antiproton. Uh, the exception here is when we come to the electron. Uh, because the anti-electron is so common, uh, we decided to give it a shorter name, and that is the positron. And instead of a line above, um, we just signify uh, that it has a plus charge as opposed to a minus charge. And as you can see, uh, the relative charge and mass um, is the same for each particle and their corresponding antiparticle, but of course the only difference is the relative charge. So we can actually create a, a particle and antiparticle pair uh, from energy. Um, this is called pair production. Pair production only happens uh, if a photon has enough energy to produce that much mass. And only gamma ray photons have that kind of energy because two, you know, two particles from just, you know, a photon, that you, you gotta have a lot of energy to create that kind of mass. It also tends to happen near a nucleus which helps to conserve momentum. The usual combo is an electron-positron pair because they have a relatively low mass. And this is how it's displayed. Minimum energy, the minimum energy for a photon to perform pair production is the total rest energy of the end particles produced. Each particles have a rest energy of uh, E0, so uh, as you can see, there's two particles produced, that's why it's E uh, times 2. Next is annihilation. In essence, this is the complete opposite of pair production. When a particle meets its corresponding antiparticle, annihilation results and the combined mass of the particles get converted into energy. So, theoretically, if you had yourself cloned, but all, you know, your protons and electrons and neutrons, basically all your matter was antimatter, so, in essence, an anti-you, if you two collided, you'd just disappear and turn into energy. How fucking cool is that? But the key thing to remember here is that two photons are created as a result, okay? This is to conserve the energy momentum, and the formula is pretty much the same, except it's... Uh, just E. Not not 2 times E. It's just E. That is it for this tutorial. This is very, very short, but hey, it's a, it's a simple concept. Um, hopefully you guys learned <laughs> at least something from this video. Uh, feel free to leave a like, comment, and of course subscribe to stay tuned for these future videos. Have a fantastically brilliant day, guys. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.